we have moved with the HR and that position is now advertised and we're hoping we get some good applicants. Uh, the one that I have before you that I need your counsel and direction and approval uh, currently have and have had an opening for a building official. Uh, the pay scale um, is such that I'm concerned about whether or not I'll receive qualified applicants. Most people um, see this as the potential for the start of a building career. One of the items that you run into is that a, an applicant for a building official uh, at this pay grade will not have the re requisite certificates. So I would like to open the position as a building inspector working through pay increases as they receive their respective certifications, working them towards the knowledge and understanding of what it takes to become a building official. The reason being, uh, to become a building official, you'll need your first four certificates, which will be residential inspector, residential plans examiner, commercial inspector, commercial plans examiner. Moving you to the next phase for building official would be uh, certified um, Disabil Americans with Disabilities Act in, uh, plan reviewer and then the next component is the legal aspects of being a building official. It takes a while to receive all of those particular certificates and have that respective knowledge. Um, after my many years of developing drawings and code analysis, etc., I helped get our last building official really well trained and he became more valuable and out the door he went and I'm seeing the same pattern happen. It's a lot of responsibility to ask somebody to apply to be a building official and literally put them in the frying pan. So as acting interim building official and then working with a new inspector, working them towards. I have also in that equation within the next two to three years, the, ex the current building inspector planning on retiring and we're going to be going through that same process again and then have that building department components of building official building inspector ready to move forward within the next four to five years under under new employees so and under this you've already taken that workload under your own correct hat and, and uh, it hasn't been overly difficult but there have been some items that uh, were overlooked that I've been trying to clean up and work through the building end of our department and get them straightened around and some interpretations of code and et cetera and a couple of policies in place. We've, we've been working through some, some issues. Well, I think any, any time we can hire somebody and train them and, and develop, I mean, I know that that's the reason that our inspector or our building official left was. But it's not budgeted for yet, correct? Real quickly, um, Jason, it is budgeted. I have a building official position that is currently funded. Um, our last building official left in um, the 1st of December last year. The position has not been filled, so we have budget to cover uh, that the payment, current, that current. But we can't. So here's what's going to happen. They're going to change, instead of replacing the grade 14 official position, we're going to replace that with an inspector that's a grade 11. And then eventually, sense. within the next 18 mm -hmm. months or so, that position will become a grade 14 again. But there are sufficient funds because we're looking at, even with the existing budget line, it'll be less of a okay. salary. So we'll okay, be fine perfect. doing this. It's, it's a pro progression mm -hmm. of, of where you want to start great. this individual and say, okay, we understand you don't have the, the knowledge and so we're going to start you here and we're going to help you develop perfect. into this position. Perfect. As a general, um, a certified building official starts at about 80000 and goes up. And a grade paid 14 here is 60000 dollars $65,000. And so finding, quote unquote, a certified building official at our current pay scale, it makes sense to start with an inspector and train that person moving them forward. The how last one it, ended up with... How long does it take to get from building inspector when, once you're hired all the way to building official? Uh, anywhere from 18 months to potentially two years. But that said, Commissioner, it also depends on 
the background of the individual relative to the building industry and code. Yeah. Because it, 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 it's a language all into itself. It's a, it's a interesting one to, to learn and understand. <coughs> anyway, I would like to receive uh, approval from 14 to 11, take it to an inspector position, take it to HR tomorrow to get it advertised. I have no problem. No, that's a good plan. Motion. Go ahead and make one. <laughs> John, <laughs> <laughs> show that to me. I like you doing them. <laughs> <laughs> <That's what's laughs> Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the um, pol or position change as discussed. We have a motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Well, the only thing you'll need to do is we'll have to have Alicia set up a new uh, position go. control before he can post the job. <clears throat> so just make sure when you email okay. HR, include her. Take care of it in the morning. Thank you. Thanks. All right, you're up, Christy. Okay. Christy Clauser, controller. Do you want to start with the ARPA since that's what the group is here for? They've, wait, they've waited this long. They can wait longer. <laughs> I thought they just wanted to come join us today. Okay. Well, we can do the budget letter really quick. They enjoyed watching us sign bills, so let's talk budget letter. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to present to the board the uh, ask what you would like to see in the department memo that the clerk usually sends out with budget sheets. Those will be going out next week. Uh, usually within that memo, we try to give some direction on salaries. We try to give some direction on uh, what to do with the operating budget. They can, of course, do what they choose to do, but the direction usually helps so that they have some guidance in what they need to do. So the first item was uh, salaries. Do we tell them just to put forth what they can? Uh, we've been working through a compensation group. Uh, when are you going to present? Do you want to talk about today or would you rather do it next week? What would you like to do? We can give you overall what we think we're going to do, but we really don't have numbers or direct guidance of anything. Alex, I, I, Alex, you want to come up and we'll talk about this real quick? I don't want that to sound wrong. You know no, I mean? no, yeah, no. And, and I talked to these guys and let them know that we had no numbers for today. So today was just a general discussion. Yeah. What we've been, the dis and Scott, you can come up as well for this a little bit. We put together a group of five or six individuals from across the county to look at the, the pay scale and the pay table and things like that and try to come up with a compensation system that that would work for the county into the future and Jason did, did a great job reaching out to the other counties to get uh, comparable pay tables from uh, Bonneville, Bingham, Madison and Twin Falls and so from that we, we found that we have some hot spots where we need to address right away and a lot of spots where we, I thought we were off, we were okay. So that was that was very useful information. So, just in a in a high level discussion, the group came up with kind of a three step plan or a three phase three step plan that we would like to propose implementing over a three year period. And again, we don't have numbers to talk about, so I don't want to get into any specifics that way. But generally speaking, we would like to condense our steps from the current level of ten down to five making the assumption that it would take up to five years to be proficient at your job, someone that is hired. With that con conden condensation, condensation, whatever the proper term would be, um, we, would, we would set the requirement that all positions would be hired at step one, but that the department managers would have the option after a 90-day period to bump them up to a higher pay step based on criteria <coughs> that they would post before so we would know that like uh, Kyle or like uh, how was just talking about once you get this certification this certification you can move up in those five steps so that was kind of the, the first phase of it the second one was talking about putting in an annual cola because if everybody's at market after five years what do we do and so we talked about putting in a number for an annual cola that we would try to shoot for based on funding availability you know, it wouldn't be a guaranteed COLA, but this is what we would shoot for, see where uh, revenue's at. And then the third part of that would be, again, based on a budget availability, if we had the funds, 
to then provide a one-time bonus for everybody that would be divided up by department and then that department head would then get to distribute the, the bonus as they saw fit within their department so for example uh, if we had five hundred thousand dollars that we could use for this bonus we would split that five hundred thousand up based on department size so one department might get twenty percent of that another department might get two percent and then that department manager would then have the ability to split that amount of funds up between their employees as they saw appropriate so that's kind of the shell the framework that the group has come up with to see if, if that's an okay direction to travel uh, and again come back maybe next week with uh, some better numbers on the the hot spots that we felt needed to be addressed based on the information received from the other counties so would we start them we'd start them at minimum you said step one but we'd start them at minimum and step then, uh, one would be minimum yes and step five would be the market rate or kind the of max. kind of what we did the, the me and the sheriff been working on is like that step five would be we took an average of the four different counties that you got the information of and then we found a kind of a level where that was the average what the other counties were paying and i think like in, in our world uh, <clears throat> you know we have like a, a general operator that has a level of proficiency that takes a little while to get there maybe getting a cdl is part of that so if somebody came to us with those proficiencies then then we could move them up a little bit faster but really we take people essentially down a half step from where we're currently at we take them down uh, below our funding would be the, that step one and then really the the position that they would be funded for and allocated for would be at that probably that 90 day step because we would assume that people are going to hit that step at some point so we'd have to fund for that and these are all things we'll have to work out the verbiage mm -hmm. on and make sure that the full board is in support of so that'll help right. get and really we can't do bonuses so what do we what do we call that extra money because we can't do bonuses we will come up with a appropriate term if that's approved by the board and, and i like the shell at least it's a movement i mean we've been here for going on six years now and mm -hmm. we've talked about something every, yeah i mean everybody every here we talk about something so I'm, I'm grateful for the work that's being taken care of here but for this letter it needs to go out hot when? No later than Friday. So for that, probably. So what, what did we say last year in the letter? Um, we really didn't address salaries. No. What I think what Which we, we could keep what same. we had what we had said is um, that you don't need to to worry about including salary increases because the commission is going to look at those through the budget process is basically the message that has been given the last three years really but then we always have departments that, that I want to make sure to put in for my people because right. I think they need raises mm -hmm. well, you're never going to stop that and we're going to evaluate that when we go through it, the it, budget process right. anyway. yeah it doesn't right. matter what, so what it doesn't would, matter what they I do. would just put in the letter what we've done for the last few years okay. and, and move forward and way. then for operating do we want to try and hold the line unless yeah. there's some different circumstances within well and that's always a statement too i mm -hmm. mean we're not looking to increase taxes look at your overall budgets in the last couple of years and, but but also as you look at as they look at budgets we want them to we want to know what their necessities are and, and there's got to be a separation between necessities and and wants and wishes and, and that would help us a lot but but if there's something out there that we've missed and we haven't talked about we need to know that at budget time too mm -hmm. okay. I mean th that this is going to be basically we're, we'll end up sending out something very similar to what we sent out the last couple of years if, we usually this is the direction too much. yeah okay. if there's no specific project or thing that you want to ask of them that we put in the letter then we'll just generally what we have the last few years I'll do that the only other thing I changed was we added a uniform line so that clothing allowances we called it uniform slash clothing allowances so that those can be tracked separate no differently than we did a few years ago the host was okay so Good. that was based on interactions the mm -hmm. okay so we'll just pretty much keep it the same and then just add the dates okay 
That's and fine. we'll continue to work on the salary stuff and report back. No, I, I appreciate your team, like I say, a direction. <laughs> I think this is the, we've talked about it every year since you and I have been here, and I think this is the most productive steps forward that we've had. Now to ARPA. Thank you. Do you have that piece of paper? I've got on your basic ARPA project spreadsheet that we look at every time with the highlights on it. Uh, I've got revised costs as much as I can um, for the up-to-date information. I've got dollars spent. I did move the forensic pathology down to the bottom. We had spent the 110,000. I moved the 2,800 to a different budget, so that freed up that $2,800. We still have $4,577,844 that we need to allocate. Four million what, please? Four million five seventy-seven eight forty-four. <coughs> I'm sorry. Say that again. Four million five seventy-seven. 844. Okay, gotcha. Uh, I need $225,083 of expenditure category items. That can be tourism if we do something at the event center or what fair. About the fair? No. It okay. could be uh, based on prior uh, projects. It could be wastewater, stormwater, water, things like that. So uh, I sent you the project list and I can go through if you want to look at these projects and then as you approve things I'll do a subtotal so that we can hopefully reach that four million five we're at five, seven, um, seven, eight, the requests four, four. are 10.3 I think right the, the requests are like that are 13. still out there yeah the backup yeah it's so 10, 10, 000. I'm wondering if there's some 10, things we 10, should just 10, take 10, off and knock that number down you can proceed how you would like. I'm well, here to facilitate. And I'll just just speak up. You guys have all heard me talk about it. We uh, made a, a decision to tear down two buildings down at the fairgrounds. And I would like to take a million dollars, build a <coughs> combination of office, meeting place, and exhibition hall that we're going to tear these two buildings down on our property down there. Is this on well, top of the already allocated yes. monies? Okay. Because the other monies are to build barns. And uh, we was down there last night and talked with them. And uh, a hundred by a hundred barn would take care of two, basically three other barns. And uh, so that would take care of some of the barn problems, concerns they have. But as I've been down there and visited and looked, if we're tearing those exhibition or exhibiting buildings down, we got to have a plan to replace them. We can't just tear something down and not have an idea. So as I've been down there the last two nights, that's just something I'll throw out there. What was the consensus? What did they decide with the... Uh discrepancy about the ownership of that land and that I've, I've been down there the last two nights and that uh, what I have talked to the board or their uh, city council about was we gotta we can't keep going back to the past you can't read half them things you know they started in 1910 and uh, so let's let's learn from the past get our attorneys together write up a document and say this is what is it is now mm -hmm. so wipe out the past and that's mayor uh, Nelson he he says well when do you want to get with this and I said well we got to have this other discussion and then we'll get together and come up with an agreement uh, so if we buy the right of ways from the property for a dollar something of that nature you know and then it's it's out there and, and we move forward from here mm -hmm. we, you can't live in limbo. I, it's been there ever since I've been here. Well, it's been there since 1910. Mm -hmm. But there's a roundabout in the middle of our property, their property. We got buildings built on their property, and they got buildings that are, you know, we cross back and forth. 
I really feel something needs to happen. Yeah. That's I'd like to invite the other elected officials up here to join in on the fun here today. Probably ought to get Dan up here too. Yeah. Dan, come on up. Well, everybody else might as well come up too if there's an empty chair. <laughs> And then the other project I would, wouldn't mind doing is I wouldn't mind going up there to the event center, building a school, and then tearing down Scott's house, and on the other end of it, having a, an office complex there. And that's all I'm saying is that these are one-time dollars that we have. These are a couple projects that I think brings our county up where it needs to be. Uh, as I look at those kids up there, I'd really like to provide something better for them. Uh, and so those are two projects that I think are good for our youth, are good for the county as a whole. And uh, I mean, as Scott runs that facility up there, <laughs> it's, it's pretty, pretty tough to me for me or you know for him to invite somebody to come and invest in our activities and you take them into that old house that <laughs> okay do you want me to add those two projects to this list well and i i'd like some discussion with these guys i mean that's we do have the deadline change of what we need to obligate but i think for the sake of procurement being able to move forward and us be able to get these contracted and moving forward um i well, those are both pretty big well, items. That we can get this list worked out today. today. <laughs> that, Hell, was, that, yeah, was, today. <laughs> that was the goal we had set. You bet. Let's go for it. Giddy up. <coughs> um, I see we have remodeled chambers on here. I think that can come off, right? That can. I thought I took that off. Oh, maybe I got a different list. I don't know. Whatever list it's I'm right looking at. the bottom. At. Commission. Yeah. Hundred thousand. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But sorry. I did make the note. So okay, that one's off. All right. Um, I would like to not put any money currently with the ARPA funds toward the thing above the 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 school that's above the elections office. And the reason for that is, I and you know I was trying to get a hold of you today and we just didn't connect. But. Um, you know, I've started talking to some people about some other ways that we can handle the school issue with respect. So I've talked to a charter school guy. I'm waiting to get a hold of the school superintendent. I think there may be some other options. And you, that's, uh, so I'm sorry we missed not talking today because I don't want to go down a wrong path either. But that's what I wanted to talk about. There may be other options where this is funded through, at least partly through the education, state education budget. And so I'd be reluctant to put any money toward this at this point when there may be another option that really does not entail the county taxpayers having to lose these one-time funds. So that's why I would not want to put any money toward that right now until that's fully investigated. Something to keep about or keep in mind is if we add a building or a facility, those are going to add costs to next year's budget for utilities, maintenance, those kinds of items. So we need to right. keep that in mind. That, okay. um, that will affect next year's bottom line. Okay. So anyway, that for that reason, I would not be in favor of the that that particular project. And so yeah, I changed my mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried. At least I tried. I'm just saying. And just because we take we don't do a project, we do have reserves. We do have the LATCF monies. We do have some other monies that doesn't necessarily mean these projects will not occur in the future. Yeah. We just need to decide what you want to use ARPA for. I had a couple of questions for Dan. Um, as I looked at the list, the, the courthouse annex sidewalks for 350, is that all of the sidewalks on the campus right around here? Yeah. And are they in that bad of shape or can we replace sections that are heaving or sure. I mean it's whatever you think you know the 
6th Street would be replaced with the project that we already approved. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the rest of them, they're, they need replaced, but it doesn't have to be right now. Um, I think the 6th Street ones are probably the worst ones. And they're going to be replaced yeah. anyway. I know that the city has a grant to do a little bit of work along Clark and Center Street as well. So, so that um, might be might be money that we could save potentially if yes. So we could take that off because we likely have another funding source. But that's there. on the wish list, not on the yeah, yeah. That's right. adopted list. Right. Yeah, we're we're just looking at the wish list. Yeah, the adopted list is set. We just need to decide what from the wish list you want to reallocate the sidewalks gone okay all right and then I'd also look at not doing the parking lot at this time the 650k I would pull that off and we just approved the funds for room 118 so we could take that off as well right okay. so I'm the sorry it's the money from the backup list for 118 the Commission chambers yeah take yep. that off so that yep. whole thing maintenance so, those three are so that's six seventy nine a million a billion one is we can just pull right out so I added the million for the fair so we're at 10 million 109 we have 2.2 .2 million to cut out still and I would take out um, well if we don't do the what is this IDC ISP Juvenile probation. What is that? That's two million dollars. That's what Ernie was talking about. Yeah. It? Okay. So I, my, I'd be in favor of pulling that out, and then we're almost there already. I'm gonna disagree with that one. Okay. Right. For right now, we'll still arm wrestle some more. Okay. <laughs> I'm not arm wrestling. What about, I want something I have a chance. What about <laughs> the landfill scale house? There's two and a half million budgeted in landfill for that, so we would only need a million and a half to finish it, but that. Could be a project that maybe we use landfill money for. We don't have we don't have any real estimates on that. That's just a swag, isn't it? No. No, we have a. It's a 3.9. Is a engineered estimate. Okay. And that was to redo the scales. So that's and the built, scale house. And building a road, so we would create a staging area for the vehicles to get them off of the main road. New scale house. New scale house and new scales and some recycling areas so if if we if we dumbed that down a little bit kept i know kept our scale my number one priority with that is a bathroom for those ladies number one um which is why it's in the budget we're, yep so what we were looking at doing on that one also is is bidding it out to where some of these things could be done by the county so like the road that goes through there, that is a county road that goes up the hill. Um, so we do receive some funding for that. So then Road and Bridge could maybe help work on building the road, which would cut a lot of that money out of there and a few things like that. But About how much do you think? Um, I don't know. I'd have to look at the guy. It's a swag. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, I mean, they're ridiculous compared to what we can build it for but there was quite a bit of um, probably over a million that was just in earthwork and asphalt so we got skills on that so if that would take a million off then the other five hundred thousand we could probably fund through the landfill so we could so you can take more work potentially five. take that whole thing off that'd be great and then how much are we down to now that that leaves us a 2.2 .2 if you take that out if my math is correct Okay. I'm at 8.6 with what's left on this list. And I want to go back to this list for a second. Okay. Because the coroner and the cooler, mm -hmm. since we are not doing the forensic pathologist, I think that's a discussion that, because that was that was hinged on. Yeah, but we have a trailer that can satisfy that need. And Dan, what's the condition of the building out there? I would not try to rebuild that building it would need to that end of that building would have to be taken down and shored up and then build a whole new building in that spot so there's a hundred thousand that so, would come off this list so I would think it would be like a more right. like two hundred and fifty thousand dollar three hundred thousand dollar project if you kill the project so. basically okay yeah. and that's, that's what I'm that's the discussion 
So we need Sorry. to either add 170, well, we either need to add 200,000 or remove the project and take and add 100,000 to allocate, if that made sense. So issues that we had that we identified this last year as we hooked up the trailer. The trailer is good, but it's a Band-Aid um, for now. Winter time caused issues because winter time it gets too cold. The insulation in that trailer is not good enough to, I guess for lack of a better word, it's getting too cold as we try to use it. So it really needs to, we were hoping that if we were to do this, we'd have it done before winter again this year and we'd have that problem solved. But that does create issues. Okay, but, but it is a big concern, I mean, well, and I think if I understood right, it's a matter of how we do it rather than re, uh, um, just doing the lean to, right? And trying to fab up something right now as it stands is probably not the best idea. If I understood what you were saying correctly, the best, of what, uh, the best approach is to actually sever that, open that space up and then build, put a steel building in its place. Okay, I'm not. So a hundred thousand dollars isn't. isn't no, I think we're we were talking what, isn't in the ballpark. Yeah. Or, well, originally we had approved a hundred thousand, but then on the backup list we had to add to that because the hundred was not going to be sufficient. Right. Yes. For the stuff we're talking about with the corner, it says here, one hundred seventy-five twenty fifty-three. Is that can all this stuff we're talking about be done for those numbers? They're going to have to be expanded a little. That's because the construction cost, it's going to expand that. A lot of what we were looking at at that time when, when those numbers were put together was our possibly our ability to do it in-house versus having to farm it out. And the other idea was, if I'm understanding correctly, we were looking to modify what is already there opposed to Dan's um, saying that he believes it would be best long term to just tear something down in that spot to a steel building. This 175 that I, I understand is additional to the 100. Yeah, but actually that 175 needs to change to 200. Right, so, but for 200 we could do it all? Well, right. it'd be this 200 plus the already allocated 100. So the total cost of the project is 300,000. But we already have 100 allocated. Yes. So we're right. only talking about a difference of 25,000. No, no, an additional uh, twenty-five from what's 200. on this list. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. An additional two hundred thousand yeah. from what's right. on this list. But from what's on this yeah, list. Yeah, add twenty-five to what I have on there. Yes. The one seventy-five and it's two hundred. So for a total of three hundred, yes. And I know that's priority to you, but it isn't to me right now. Well, and I'll explain why. Because here's the issue: is well, no, I, I just told you. I know it's a priority to you, but it isn't to me. Well, I understand that, so but there's two other commissioners, and you said you wanted to have a conversation, so I thought we would at least discuss it. But I'm okay if we want to just kill it, too. Well, that's where I'm at. Okay. And again, just because projects go away doesn't mean they can't be picked up at a later date. It's just for the ARPA funds is what we're talking about. Right. You're adding and subtracting as we go here, I assume. Yes, I yeah, that's so why she brought a computer. So are we taking... <laughs> right? okay. are we taking I, I'm not inclined to take that money off, especially since the forensic lab was not going forward. I, you know, I mean, I want to see where we are with the rest of these numbers, but I'm not ready to pull that off the list yet. Jeff, do you have a decision on that one yet? Kill it. Okay. So we have two to, two to one. That one's off. Okay. So let me add the other hundred. I know I do. I should have brought my nails. <laughs> um, and that bottom number now goes to four point six million. So if you're tracking this, Jeff, add a hundred thousand. Add a hundred thousand. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll struggle through. So we now have three point seven to reduce, right? You see anything else that just you don't want on here? We have to remove how much? What, what's our total now on this on all of the stuff that's eight point four million? We have sorry, eight point four million is what's on the the wish list. We have to reduce three million seven and change. 
And where, so how much do we have right now for the landfill scale house remodel? We don't have any on the wish I took, list. I took that off the list. Oh, it's off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's just start at the top. Leases. If you want to reduce ongoing costs, we could pay off the leases. However, if you just re acquire more leases, that defeats the purpose of saving ongoing monies. A handful of the leases don't look like they have a ton of miles, and I'm not talking the sheriff ones yet. <laughs> You're different. Um, but some of those vehicles we could just buy, keep, and that would reduce $50,000, $60,000 in future budgets. Is that for all three of these at the top where it says countywide? Just, or the, just the first the enterprise? enterprise. Just enterprise. Now, when we get to the sheriff leases, if we paid those off, that would not necessarily save ongoing monies because the sheriff's office needs to replace five, potentially six vehicles every year. Next year, we will be at the point that we are leasing five vehicles. So that cost is gonna be what we're gonna be spending, assuming we keep on track with doing that cycle of vehicles. So that won't save any money. The only thing it will save is if we buy sheriff vehicles instead of lease, then those vehicles can be trickled down to the other departments, like what we've done. And then next year, current, we, to current. the first of the five years, where we see where that residual lands yeah. after yeah. next year. We're coming so, to the end of that. Correct. Mm -hmm. Which we, we're waiting for, see where that, what happens with that. I think that's why we started it. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Run the test. Yes. So we could just pay off the enterprise leases? Um, if we pay them all off, though, it'll, it'll reduce, it will reduce ongoing costs or it will not? The enterprise ones will, yes. So if all three, just the enterprise? Yes. If you don't, turn around and reacquire new leases. It yeah. defeats a purpose to pay them off and then go back to leasing. No. So if the intent is to pay off the enterprise leases and then not continue with leases, that will save us going forward. How many, in, in the past, um, when we were purchasing sheriff vehicles, how many of those did we recycle each year? All of them. All of them. All of them. So we, yeah. we kept them. So it saved us buying new vehicles and we would just scatter those down. And but we can potentially still do the same thing. Right, that's true. I guess at the end of the lease, Correct. we can buy it out. For, and then for we some of them. For some. some of them we we're buying back, some of them were not. Some of them were a dollar buyback. Yeah, and some I mean, of them were a little yeah. And some had residuals if we wanted to get Carry rid of them. Carry it forward. And see what, what the values were on that, the five vehicles. Yeah. So do you think you would prefer to, to, to keep leasing your vehicles? Well, I... If we didn't, we'd still be doing the same thing. We'd purchase and still rotate brand new equipment in it. Because that was the, the other part of this was recycling those cars. Once that five year came up, we'd get rid of that car and we just order it with new new equipment. Prior to that, we were trying to retrofit equipment in newer vehicles, which was just it was economically it was and labor intensive because our guys were doing it. And if you ever changed models of vehicles, correct, you couldn't do it because you can't put Ford stuff in Chevy. But we can still do that if we purchase it outright. Now, so we, we kind of you to his vehicles. So the we cycle use. program helps departments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like when you lease, they have all the equipment on them and maintain that. And but we can still do that even if we purchase it outright. We can still do the same setup dealing with the two vendors. Yeah. Regardless, it's going to be the same thing. It's just if we're making lease payments. It's whether we pay it all up front or we just stretch yeah. it out on lease. Yeah. Yeah. So do we have a... I was trying to hit an easy one. Well, <laughs> maybe maybe an easy one real quick and we can come back to that is the windows of juvenile detention. Is that 250 anticipated our expense or is that 250 to be divided by that's by county. total cost but I'm not sure 100% what those windows are but anything on the detention side needs to be shared with right that's what I'm saying that counties. 250 isn't really 250 it might be right. 50 and that might be something that would be easy for us to do using LATCF monies or PILT monies I think that's an easy one to take off mm -hmm. because that becomes a shared expense with yeah. different different and counties. it doesn't kill the project it just mm -hmm. great take it off 
saves two hundred fifty thousand for <coughs> projects. Why didn't you do that before I did? Going back to this discussion, and then I saw that way. Wait a minute. Going back to this lease thing, is the recommendation to go ahead and pay off the enterprise, but leave the sheriff, the two sheriff ones, as it is? Is that what you guys are thinking? I not not I'm, put ARPA money to that. I'm just saying that it will not save ongoing money. It doesn't money. change anything. And you're okay with that if we just pull those two off then? Well, it's a matter of if we stay with the leases, we would, and if the decision is to purchase it outright, then we would just go forward to the next budget and plan on purchasing. So it sounds like we could take these two off and it's fine. I personally like the leases for your vehicles because I just think it's easier for you. But it, Which, if I'm wrong, let me know. But that's I think it, it, the way it's set up now, I think we can do it the same way even if we purchase it. Okay. Because we still have good contacts now with the two vendors that deal with the, the equipment and the vehicles. So and it's just a matter of saying, hey, this is the vehicle we take want. Take that off. Hard to go. So take off the sheriff vehicles? Yes. Both of those? Yeah. The Where lease we and the now? right of use leases? Yeah. The right of use. One is a... Uh, one that would, we would flip and the other is the purchase. Okay. So that was the difference in those. Uh, we are. Tony, tell me about the boiler room for the search and rescue building. What's so it's that temporary boiler room. That's that's behind the That's the behind jail. that we had to use for, well, temporary right. boiler room. Right, right. So it's a room that's just vacant now, but it has power. It has heat, and it's a matter of turning that into a useful building for whether it's a SWAT team or put all their stuff because there is a room within our building that we could utilize for office space if we were to move that somewhere. So where'd you come up with the 400000 Well, that was with the search and rescue building doing some upgrades on that as well, on the back end of it. The back end, of, there's heat. There's power, there's just no water or anything like that. And those are numbers that Levi came up with if we were to do that. It's not essential. I mean, it's it's one of those that it, it, do, it would provide us more useful space and we can move some things out of the building. That, and when I say the SWAT team, because there are Bearcats back there, everything's back there. And we would push all their equipment back into that building and they could actually store we we have lockers in that one room that's in our main building we'd move all those lockers to one of those buildings and then we'd utilize that new bigger locker room as a it's that main room as so you come in that back there's our armory and then there's a big locker room that's just lockers for swapping. just a big metal building that was in back that's so that would affect this 400,000 would be improvements on that big metal building back and that temporary boiler room. If you had to pick between that, the new emergency generator, which was here. I, I, I have the generators that can go if okay. I had to do it. Done. And the body scanner can go. Because I think we can find a grant for that. And then the showers. See, I'm all taking the sword. Yeah, you no, no, stop, stop right. Stop, stop, right. Can stop, go right. stop right there. We wanna, <laughs> Don't keep going. Well, <laughs> and this is straight from Levi because we want to see if there's another route we want to go with those. So you want, so you think you'd be inclined to wait on the showers? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it's a matter of, we want to see where we're at with these current showers that we've done to see if that's the long term. But everything oh, else on there. Yeah, for longevity to see if this is the answer. Because why put more into it if it's not the answer that right so we just took off the showers the body scanner and the generator correct Seven hundred thousand. and that paved parking lot is one that i actually got a more current estimate just today what's the number for that 75. not 100 but 75. yes it's 73 Four, but I'm saying 75. Scott? Um, I, I think that we're going to come in on our grandstands project. I know we're going to come in on our budget somewhere in the $10,000 below budget. And I think we can actually roll 
our flags. I think the flag pro flags will be about 15,000, so I could take 10,000 from that grandstand project and then probably just find some rest, some in the rest of our budget so we could probably kill that $25,000 too. So mm -hmm. take off that. we'll take that we off. We'll still get the flags. Yeah. Off is what you're saying. <laughs> we'll, still, we'll still get the flags, but we can take that off. Well, right we can here. take it off of here. Yeah. yeah take it okay. off here. We'll Sounds great. Yeah. So we're down to we need 2.1 million taken off. We have on here the corner truck, table, and cooler. If we're not doing the actual the renovation space, do we need that? Okay. And we did talk on the fleet, so that takes off another 73. We did talk, Kyle and I talked on the fleet that if we paid off some of the leases, there might be opportunity uh, to reallocate some vehicles um, that might serve replacing the expedition that the corners have and get him a, a more reliable vehicle to have to Yeah, that's off that's on the list. Yeah. And we're looking yeah, with the fleet, we we're over forty vehicles that are over twenty years old. And this is just these costs throughout the years that we kinda are kicking this down like can down the road and it's not getting any better. But we got, like we've said before, we've got two or three vehicles that are in the 80s. And it's something that we really need to look at. So again, we, we've talked about this and just to make sure I'm tracking what you're saying, you feel we can cut 40 vehicles from our fleet of 160 and not really die? No. No, I'm saying there was like 40 that are over 20 something years, but that's not saying that we're not using them. Right. Um, so we talked the other day. And yeah, you so we, we have 165 vehicles in our fleet, right? Yes, so we, we do have, so the list that you got and where we come up with that um, dollar amount is there is vehicles that can be getting, um, getting rid of or underutilized, but every one of them are so old we still need to purchase these vehicles just to maintain our fleet because these ones are all utilized ones that are on here but that's i kind of got a sheet of showing of what they are but there's nothing we can move around necessarily like say if there's a department with some underutilized and say we need to get rid of them, but then there's some that are utilized that are still 20 years old. Right, but like we talked about, if we could condense that 40 down to maybe 15 fleet vehicles, so we have new fleet vehicles, get rid of all the 20 year plus vehicles, that would be a potential direction to go instead there of- There could be that. That would be the next part of our discussion if we go with the policy then we go out to the departments because I can't right now say what their u utilization is without going out and visiting with each one and seeing what works best for them. We might even be able to move some vehicles a little bit and stuff like that, but it still doesn't really change the price of new ones that we're looking at for this year. So. Okay. So but it will save with other areas. What if we take off the fleet replacement and just plan a budget for that out of the general fund reserves next year. I know we've got reserves of that amount that we could utilize. If you're comfortable with my opinion on that. Well, I'm comfortable. I mean, we got a plan. We're, we're going in a direction with our vehicles. Uh, and, that, and that is a big one right there. Mm -hmm. That gets us a lot closer if you're comfortable with using reserves they're they're capital purchases it's one-time vehicles that's an extreme it's that's a pill it's appropriate to use reserves for that yeah i'd say take it off yeah now you only need eight hundred and three thousand. so dan i have a question and on my opinion has always been do as much deferred maintenance and, and so that we don't have that ongoing but if we're still going to if we're still talking about uh potentially uh, a building up there at the wellness complex. What about the road and bridge roof 
in this slot of money and I have a question about the uh, bathroom remodel at Historic. Yeah, so just a wish list, the Historical Museum needs bathrooms. Um, and that those didn't get touched at all in the in the insurance and remodel and all that? What it has going on is I had a uh, heave in the floor and so there's kind of a hump in the bathroom and it's broke the tile. And so it's created a hazard. So just as a wish list, I put it on there. Maybe not. Which bathroom is the one that you think is a hazard? The women's bathroom. Yeah. You know, okay. Because I, you know, I've been there all the time. I don't see a problem. Well, it's got broken tile. It's heaved up a few inches. It actually goes clear through the place. I don't know how it happened. But. And then the road and bridge roof needs its past due. Um, I think that's a pretty close number of what it would take to replace it. I mean, it's a black membrane roof that. Mm. has probably okay. upwards of 100 patches on it. It's due. Um, and then the planning and zoning one, I mean, it's not critical. It's more of a cosmetic thing that isn't critical, but something that we've always just kept pushing off that still looks pretty bad out the there. The planning yeah. GIS, I would just take that off personally. I don't know what you think. It's 325. Yeah. I was going to ask you which roof was more important. I'd say you, you feel like that one. Plan and zoning is more of a cosmetic thing, and his is more of a. Okay. So we're down to half a million. The now. skylight. Skylights could be absorbed in maintenance. It's just a, a wish list. Two of them leaked this year. They're kind of just rotten out. But we could. We did two a year. And well, I think, think we've been best to put a bit in there right now. And yeah. That's right. And uh, we'll go this other direction. They're not leaking, so it's just more of a proactive thing. And then the brick work at the veterans. I'll tell you why I think that's good. We've been putting, since before I came here, there's been 150 grand I know go into this building for a few years now. Yeah. If we do this, that building's done. And all that money gets dropped down on going to what we need to do for maintenance. And we need a maintenance plan. But I think that's gonna save us 100 grand a year going forward. At least. So that's why I think that's good. Is that, is that, is the brickwork out there uh, at the Veterans Building, that 183000 does that do the whole building, or is that just like south side that's got the most weather exposure? And I don't have anything to do with that building, but I know the mortar on that thing is gone. Yeah. So it better get something or else it's going to start falling off. And that, I'm just saying that we've already put 150, 20, and 25. I mean, we've already put better than $200,000 into the building. <coughs> and then here's another, so we're putting $500,000 basically into this building. Well, I think they were done. They were done uh -huh. going forward. So. You want to take off the brickwork or? Well, and that, that, that's the discussion we was had. Some, some of these items we can also look and see what reserves look like and throw them in next year's budget. We have PILT money and we have LATCF money. So what are the projects that we want to get done this year right now with ARPA? It's not going to necessarily kill these projects from budgeting for next year. No, with what we did, you did, I don't know if she heard everything you just took. We just took off here. So well, we're, we're we have to cut the, the skylight okay. is off. The the roof, uh, GIS. Yep, GIS. GIS. Yeah, the GIS thing is that's off. And that's the historical off. restrooms off. Oh, I think that was still discussed. We took off GIS. It's. The yeah. bathrooms. Asking which, which the bathrooms are. Wow. What if it it just Scott made. had an idea? What if we just did seventy-five thousand and did one of the bathrooms, not both? Yeah. To address the safety issue, but yeah. maybe if the other one works and is fine, that so might save half. Put it half. at seventy-five. Yeah. Well, what do you get? I mean, I'm not inclined to do. I I don't see it, and I'm but I'm no expert, and you are. So well, and, the, and these are that's kind of what I'm weighing is. Okay, do we do the brickwork at the veteran center? Or do we do bathrooms? I mean. Tip for tat, kind of evaluate. I'd put the brickwork ahead of it personally. I, I have seen a couple spots where that brickwork, we are going to start losing bricks, just falling out. Okay. The, there, there are some spots that you can stick your finger right, right into it. <laughs> that well, and that goes back to the conversation we've had with the, yeah. them, that they have some obligations also yeah. in uh, coming up with funds and taking this? care of that. Facility. I can take five hundred thousand dollars off for Road and Bridge's roof, and we can use that. We can budget that next year on Road and Bridge reserves. 
And then the, does that take us to where we need to be with and everything else? That gives you $42,000 you need to spend. I'm sorry? Thanks, It gives you $42,000 you need to spend. I just lost everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're budgeting for it next year. You just have to have patience. <laughs> Thanks, Christy. <laughs> patience, next year. Kyle, such a good Excuse me, that means everything else on this list. Hey, one second. We got oh, sorry. too many conversations. <laughs> one second. Did you, did you leave the money then for the... Juvenile attention yes, building. I didn't change that. So do we need to change the value on the juvenile probation kids from a two million? Do yeah. we need to reduce that down at all? I think it needs to be reduced down. I think it could be done. We have a shell of a building that we can use that with for four hundred and sixty thousand dollars. So you mm -hmm. put another four hundred thousand on the inside, and you get it for for under a million dollars. Well, can I make a comment on that though, real quick? I, I think it's important to remember. That there's the school up there, the Youth Development Center. But that, where we're at right now, is our entire intensive services unit. So there's four other full time probation officers up there that supervise caseloads of anywhere between 20 or 15 to 30 kids at any given time. So we have another roughly 100 families um, at any given time accessing that building to go meet with probation officers. Plus, um, we have had a, a counselor that comes and provides services once a month for kids who have been required to participate in sex offender counseling specifically. So there's there's a school and that's a critical part to it, but there's also other offices and services and probation officers that are up there as well. So, so that's where I come back to Dan. You draw, we have a drawing. And um, what do you figure the cost on that drawing is? Well, with the location that we were talking about, I, I added costs in for a road to get back there, the utilities to get all the way back there, um, I think the shell price was missing a few things, so it, I don't think I think two million is like adding some, you know, contingency on there. But I would be cautious to go lower than one point five. I can't remember Jeff because I I agree that that contractor that had that bid for the shell was really impressive guy. I can't remember what the total square footage was. Seven thousand. And what's your square footage that you have right now? Well, up above the old jail, it's about eight or nine, but the drawing we have currently is five. Right? Yeah. And then you can put Scott on the other end. In 10 square feet. But if we go and if we do the buildings down at the fair, so we'd have two buildings down there and one here, and we put them out on the same bid, what would we get with three buildings? in a package. So what if we allocate 1.5 million to the juvenile probation? That puts us where we need to be. And then Kyle gets to keep his room. <laughs> Things are looking up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't like that idea. <laughs> but here's the other thing we can do is as these projects, if we allocate these projects the way we have them here, I think I'm gonna put that 1.5 in here, then that gives us $41,000 additional to spend somewhere. But as the bids come in and Shanda works through the procurement process, if we get final numbers and that property and building need to come in higher than that, we allocate pill or something like that. As long as it's done by June, we have other funds that we can add to this if we're a little bit short. And if any of these other projects we find are going to be less, then mm -hmm. we can allocate them that sure. way too. So there is a give and take going both ways. And I can even put one million five forty one oh nineteen and then every dollar is allocated. I mean that that's fine. That's square footage. The, the, the other issue. question I have is so these got to go out to bid, and we're going to put a lot of weight and pressure on Shanda. What's your thoughts in all these projects we're talking about, too? So, I so mean, we got we got deadlines to meet, right. and, and so and let me rattle off because I'm not sure how well you were able to keep track. Oh, all right. So anything that's going to have to go through procurement is going to be the juvenile facility, the road and bridge roof polishing the cement for the sheriff, um, paving the parking lot, the landscaping, 
air handlers, search and rescue, tent building, the restroom, restroom remodel for historical, I'm, I'm not sure how that falls in, but <coughs> it's us doing, well, it's our building, so that'll have to go through procurement. Um, the veterans building brickwork is a weird one because it's their facility, but. They do their procurement, so that one won't be on me. But I will need procurement done because it's our mm -hmm. Um And then the fairground stuff, which you kind of already may or may not know about. So it's more than it looked like, but. But there are everything. some good things that we have in the works already that architectural services is going to be one of them because there's quite a few of them on here uh, the roof the remodels um, that are going to be need to go um, so that is going to put a lot of pressure I think Dan has a meeting next week with Booth Architecture to start those projects rolling and then we'll get a much better idea of when they'll have architectural drawings ready for us to go um, so it's good that we already have that one going the other pieces depending on how many shells you guys approve we do have 85 percent of one already done and ready we remodel what we need to do with the one that we've got and we're able to put it back out the timing is going to be the thing any ones that are going to be um over uh for public works anything that's over that two hundred thousand, we've got to publish twice and right there's just timing on there that is going to run us anywhere between four to six weeks by the time we get one live and we get <coughs> back awarded there's five of those um, so on there is some time on the the meeting or the the building down at Downey um, it might it might be beneficial if we just like threw that under my stuff rather than that we could just throw that so I could be work with Shanda on that stuff rather than trying to take that to the fair board meetings and back and forth it might just be easier if we I'll still keep those guys in the loop we'll still meet with them and talk about that stuff but I'm just saying if it's going to go towards that office we could just put the office under kind of under my purview so that I'm working with Shanda as far as approving the RFP stuff getting this stuff back and forth uh, rather than necessarily waiting for the fair board to meet and approve any changes it would just make it fast and we kind of stress that last night too mm -hmm. I don't see why that would be a problem all that would yeah. go underneath the commission it's yeah, a building it's under the yeah. commission get it done. We we did leave the elections eighty eight doors on, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I just sent you my list. If you want to check it with what you've got. Okay. Did, you, did you send it to all of them? I will send just it to everybody. In that square footage. Yes, did, were you including the rec yard in that we, square we footage? Got, we ordered one already. Okay. Up there. Yeah. That gives Matt five hundred dollars more. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So, so are we good? So the five thousand oh, square feet is okay. We are we've got the number we need you'll You'll use the whole um, complex and you. Do you want me to review it just really quick? So that okay. can everybody listen and Christy will go through. Okay. You can so make you your kit. Sir, what I have on the list right now is we're going to pay off the enterprise leases, which is roughly $279,000. So if we can get that fine tuned, that might leave a little bit more money. Um, the ISP ish, uh, kits, uh, $1,544,519. Elections ADA doors for twenty five thousand. Roden Bridge Roof five hundred thousand. I still can't believe we did that. For the sheriff in jail. <laughs> Must have been a mistake. For the sheriff in jail, we're going to polish cement two hundred thousand. Landscaping ninety seven thousand three twenty five. Pave the parking lot seventy five thousand. Additional emergency power panels eighteen thousand. Air handlers one hundred and forty thousand. Excuse me, on the emergency power panels is that eighteen hundred? Eighteen thousand. Yeah. Uh, air handlers 140,000, walk in freezer upgrade 16,000, search and rescue building and temporary boiler room 400,000, the historical restroom remodel 150,000, ag extension new carpet paint inside and out 50,000, veterans building brickwork 183,000, fairgrounds office etc. A million. If that sounds good, I will send it to everybody even though everybody's writing it down. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you very that, much. We're good. Do we need a motion on this? Or? I can bring this. I'd, I'd like her to have the cleaned packet. So we. And yeah. I made it really rough sure. So I'll pretty the switch it up a little bit. And then I can do. I can okay. present this. Um, 
I would also like to present to the board that, and I need to look and see which one of these will fit within that expenditure categories that we need to spend. Fair enough. And then, and, right, but I want to show it. So what I can do is move all of this to the Marcus spreadsheet that's color coded, and then you guys will have that. We can do a formal approval, and then the only thing that will change is as estimates come in through procurement and those kinds of things, then we can see by the end of July how we can possibly reallocate any unspent dollars, or if something else comes in under, then we can, or over, we can figure out how to deal with that. And then through the budget process, we'll figure out if there's any overages, we'll throw in some contingency money somewhere. That works? Sounds good to me. Okay. Next week, are we having a meeting on Thursday? I think so. Okay. Then next week, I'll, um, yeah, no, no. Okay. Next week, I'll put that, and then also I'm going to throw a disclaimer before the board saying that you've approved these expenditure allocation areas, and I've reported as such. And then you've met all your ARPA deadlines and all that stuff. Yes, I think we have. Okay. To the Good? penny. Okay. I will get this sent out tomorrow, and then if you guys see anything that is incorrect, please let me know, and then um, I'll throw it on the agenda in the packet for Thursday. Good. 